The National Institute of Justice offers an annual grant. It's called the Missing and Unidentified Human Remains Grant. It offers up to $500,000 to six counties across the country. It's a significant amount for a small office like ours. For our office, $500,000 is about half of our budget. There are a couple things that went into why we were selected. I think first is that we do have a very firm um, understanding of where we stand and what we need. We can use the funds for anything to undertake the project of identifying human remains and assisting with identification of missing persons. So that can encompass uh, salaries, DNA testing, forensic odontology analysis, anthropology analysis. The most inhibitive part of getting remains identified is the financial cost for DNA testing. We have not had the opportunity to do that for our cases because the state lab and the FBI federal lab are backed up. They have such a backlog that they cannot accept new cases. So at this point, we would have to pay a lab to do the testing that we need. That's what this grant is for. This will help us do that. Since 2017, we have about 20 sets of remains that are still unidentified. They are still here at our facility without names. So we're hoping that the funds from this grant, we can at least take uh, steps to work towards an identification, mainly in the form of DNA testing. We'll get calls from local law enforcement agencies about different scenarios where human remains are found. Very often it's migrants that have crossed the border and died during that process. Those are the hardest to identify. They're nearly always skeletal remains. Photos from families and uh, different types of tattoos or scars or marks that they have are no longer present to help identify them. There's also scenarios where people aren't migrants, that they're just unidentified. It could be someone that's without a home and they're just transient in a, in a part of town where people may know of them, but they don't know who they are specifically. As an anthropologist, I would examine the remains to assess for what we call a biological profile. Are they male or female? Are they between the ages of 20 and 40? Are they younger? Are they older? Are they white? Are they black? Are they Asian? But then also possible height. Um, so it's not gonna be an exact, they were this precise age, this precise height. Um, but just to give a kind of, this is more of what we're looking at. The other reason that I think we got this grant awarded to us is because we also incorporated into our project populating the missing persons databases with more missing persons. There's a national DNA database called CODIS, and when someone is missing, law enforcement would typically request from the family DNA samples of the family members. Occasionally they can get it if they have items from the actual missing person, like a toothbrush, um, a hairbrush. But typically what's done nowadays is to get family reference samples is what they're called. So they will get a DNA sample from, let's say, a mother and a son or a mother and a brother and populate those into the CODIS database. And then eventually, if we enter an unidentified remains into that same DNA database, there's a chance that it's going to show a relationship match to the missing persons. DNA testing is uh, highly reliable. But if we don't have something to compare it to, the results of the DNA analysis will then remain in that database. So if five, 10, 15 years down the line, family decides to come forward and say, hey, I want to put my own DNA into this system, it will then be there to match in the future if that were to happen. Missing and unidentified human remains are considered the nation's silent mass disaster because there are so many missing persons and unidentified remains that have not been associated back to each other yet. It's greatly satisfying to be able to make those connections and be able to provide answers to families, um, provide closure to families who may have lost their loved ones years ago. Everybody deserves to be buried with their name and have their family know where they're buried and take care of them. And right now, these remains are just here. We don't want to get rid of them into a burial site that the family doesn't have a chance to go to because we don't know who they are. So we're going to hold on to them until we get them identified.